Hello, welcome to Ofoi TV. My name is Ikuya. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. Please click the subscribe button so that you'll be alerted whenever I drop a new video. All you have to do is just sign in whilst you're on YouTube watching this video and then click on the subscribe button. If you're watching it on Facebook, please make sure you follow me, share the video with your friends and family so that they can also be educated about the delivery process. But if you're somebody who has been coming here and you have never subscribed, I hope that by the end of this video, then you are convinced to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for doing this. Guys, on this platform, I share information about the delivery, the process, how to apply after you have won, the way to go about the process and to get you to the end goal. Occasionally, I will share some content about you know b1 b2 visas like tourist visa and other types of visas that you can use to come to the united states but today we are going to focus on the dv lottery specifically the dv 2024 winners the dv 2024 winners are people who won the lottery in may 2023 all right and they are going for their interview and their interview started uh, on october 1st so they've already gone through the first quarter of the 2024 fiscal year all right um today's update is going to be about the u.s embassy in accra ghana so i'm not going to talk about all the embassies today we're just going to focus on the u.s embassy in accra ghana if you're somebody who is watching this video and you're interested in hearing about the updates from your country put it down in the comment section below if more people from your country make such requests who knows your country may be featured in the subsequent video all right now let's get right into it so those of you who want a dv 2024 congratulations your interviews are ongoing so how are the embassies doing how is the u.s embassy in accra ghana doing okay now if you're looking at the visa uh, monthly visa issuance um, we have data for only two months from the first quarter October November we don't have the data for uh, December so in the month of October the US Embassy in Accra did not interview anybody did not issue visa to anybody okay in the month of November the US Embassy in Accra Ghana issued uh, 35 visas all right now uh if you're looking at chargeability the chargeability is basically for um people um the country that they are charged to meaning your nationality okay so in the month of october even though the u.s embassy in accra ghana did not conduct any interviews for dv loading winners four Ghanaians were able to get their visas from other embassies 38 Ghanaians were able to get visas from other embassies uh, and including the U.S. Embassy in Accra, Ghana in the month of November, bringing the total number of Ghanaians who were issued visas in the month of October and November to 42 total globally. Okay, so as you guys uh, understand, when I say Ghanaians, it's not just about Ghanaians living in Ghana, but Ghanaians who are living elsewhere in the world and they attend their interviews, uh, whether in Ghana or outside of Ghana. All right. Now let's go to uh, the number of cases that have been processed uh, based on this data. Guys, this data that I'm sharing this information with you is I'm going to link the source of this uh, data for you so that you guys can go to that website and um, check out some of the information yourself so um 60 cases 60 cases have been scheduled for interview at the u.s embassy in accra ghana and this covers the first quarter of the 2024 fiscal year which will be october november december this data was made uh, available on the first of january it covers october november december okay the first portion of my uh, of this video was just talking about the visa issuance for two months october and november this one is going to cover october november and december all right so far the highest case number that has been um scheduled for interview at the u.s embassy at Accra, Ghana is uh 4300 meaning 4300 ranges 
As you guys may already know, the visa bulletin cutoff point for Africa is 22,000. So if the U.S. Embassy in Accra, Ghana is yet to get to people with case number 5,000 and above, that means that the U.S. Embassy in Accra, Ghana is running behind schedule as compared to the previous years. I know that the DV 2023, there were people whose case numbers were 7,000 who had their interviews in November. We are now in January, and if somebody with case number 5,000 was not able to get interview in December, then in the U.S. Embassy, it looks like they're running behind schedule. So let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that the Embassy will uh, speed up and increase their uh, capacity and improve their performance, all right? Now, of the 60 cases that were that have been scheduled interview at the U.S. Embassy in Accra, Ghana, um, 25 of those cases are ready, ready. So some of those cases that are ready, some of those people uh, attended interview this month, um, this week, okay? So some of the, the 25 uh, cases that show as ready, these are no cases that have been attended to in any way. They have not been attended to the way. 25 cases that were just ready for interview and some of them are attending interview this month and i believe this week some of them have already attended interview and so we are yet to get that data and put it all together all right now um 30 25 25 cases on 25 cases all of the people all of the applicants on those 25 cases were issued their visa and the number of people applicants who were issued their visas on cases where all the people on that on those cases were issued were 39 people 39 people or 39 applicants let me try and explain that again so i'm saying that on 25 cases all the people got their visas issued and some of the cases may have like two people three people four people so with cases like that it brought the total of visas issued for such cases to be 39. now there are five cases where all the people were refused all the people were refused five cases where all the people were refused and for those five cases they were all single applicants they were not married applicants or they did not have um, dependents they did not have children they were not like single mom single dad or married people it was just individual single applicants all right and then there are four cases where um the people were asked to, uh, uh, you know, they were placed in 20, 221G. 221G could be a whole lot of things. When you are placing uh, under refuse 221G, um, mostly it tells you that just follow the instructions of what the consular officer told you. Uh, mostly they could be requesting for further documentations. They, maybe you did not bring something that was instrumental to making the decision on your case. Um, or it could be that they need to call your school, call your job to verify certain you know, documents that you have presented. Or they may have to send a field investigator to do uh, a background check on you. Or they need to compare your information to you know, their global database in order to make um, a decision about your case. But oftentimes when you refuse under 221G, um, the consular officer will hint to you uh, about what they could be doing, okay? Now, um, I haven't heard, you know, much from the people who were refused, which obviously uh, is very common when people get refused because of that big disappointment or the big setback they have received. Some people are not in uh, a good place to discuss what happened. Um, so, um, it's, you know, we're uh, sorry and sad for those people who were refused their visa and we wish them the best of luck on their next journey or with whatever they decide to do uh, going forward. But those of you who are uh, waiting for your interviews um, and some of you are wondering whether like, should I move my case? What should I do at the moment? To be honest, I cannot tell you what to do. Um, these are decisions that, you know, could change your life, right? 
So you should be the one to make that decision so that you can own the consequences of that decision. Um, my, the best advice that I will give to you guys is that just follow the update, follow the numbers, see the statistics. What does it mean to you? Does it, you know, tell you to take your case elsewhere or does it tell you to stay put and, you know, hope for the best, right? Um, but the, the, the thing that I will also add is that make sure you're preparing for your interview, whether your case number is 50,000 or 60,000 or 90,000. Prepare for your interview as if your interview is coming soon because this refuse and the 22-1G of being placed in AP, a lot of people end up not getting their visa because they end up in AP. They end up in administrative processing. And so even though your case number might be a bigger number, you might get your interview while somebody's case is still pending in AP. And when your case is placed in AP, it could take a long time. I've seen cases be in AP for almost six months, right? And that is for DV lottery alone. In other types of visas, sometimes you can be in AP for a whole year and the embassy hasn't even gotten back to you. But for DV lottery, I have seen somebody be in AP for like four months. Right. So imagine whilst your case is waiting in AP for four months, people are going for their interviews and we could run out of visas just like it happened in DV 2023. So the best, best advice I can give to you guys is that prepare and see if you're going for interview tomorrow. OK, don't make decisions when you are panicking. Right. Like now you heard that the U.S. Embassy in Accra, Ghana has only got to. Uh, 4,300 range. So you're panicking. Oh, where do I send my kids? Should I send my kids? You know, from my experience, you don't make the best decisions when you're panicking. When you're being reactive, you have to be proactive, not reactive. You don't just jump because you hear bad news and then you're jumping. Uh, make rational decisions. So when you're panicking, uh, make sure you calm yourself down, look at the evidence around you, look at the data around you, and then make a better decision when you are at your most rational. All right? Guys, if you enjoy this video, please make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, Wofoy TV. My name is Ikea. If you want to join my Telegram um, group, just send me an email with evidence. Uh, which is your first notification letter, the letter that says, congratulations, you have been selected for further processing in the devolution. Yes, that letter. Send that to me and then you'll be allowed to join the group. Guys, make sure that it is your own. If it is not your own, when you send the email, please make sure to introduce yourself that, hey, it's my wife who won the lotto. It's my this who won the lotto, right? I am not allowing any agent any third party, any middleman be in my telegram group. But guys, I wish you all the best of luck after your interview. Please share your interview experience with us so that fellows who are going behind you, who are going to your embassy, they can be better prepared um, to, you know, uh, face their interviews. I love you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Share, 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 share. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.